Okay, if you're out there, I'm streaming, but I'm obviously having technology issues again, as we often do here with all of these cameras rolling. I was just on Facebook, and I just want to make sure I can see your live feed so I can see your comments out there, and for whatever reason, you're not popping up, and it's making me crazy. So I'm going to spend another second on this stuff, and then we're going to see how we end up. All right, no, that still didn't do it, darn it. Nothing worse than trying to be ready to go with these videos. The reason that the live feed is so important is because I want to be able to communicate with all of you. And if I can't see my comments, then I can't communicate with all of you and know how it's all going out there. You know what I'm saying, saying? So at any rate, what I'm gonna do here is figure out what on earth has happened. If anybody's watching, please stick with me. I'm going to walk you through this cake tutorial in just a second. I absolutely promise it. Don't you worry about a thing. I'm going to just roll a couple of cameras here, make sure everything stays golden for us throughout the beauty of today. And let's see if I've panicked long enough. <laughs> Two minutes worth of panic. Not too bad. And... Hey, there I am. <laughs> you would think that the cape would make me feeling super. Ah, Joan, you see and hear me. Thank you. Peggy, you're out there. I did have a ton of fun at market. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're doing this. Radical. I got something going on across the room as well with that camera, but I don't care anymore. I'm going to have fun. Look at this. Mike is ready. I am ready. Jane is ready. We're ready to rock and roll. Thank you so much for being here. It is a super happy Wednesday afternoon. California, almost on time, 1.35. I was over on Facebook goofing around trying to get more people to watch over there. I thought that would be really fun, really cool, um, because I want to talk about a bunch of quick stuff. Uh, as Peggy, I believe it was, was just mentioning, yes, we had a blast at Quilt Market. Why was Quilt Market so awesome? Well, Quilt Market was so awesome for a couple of reasons. The number one reason is Michael Miller Fabrics was on fire. Their new print lines were fantastic. The designers, as always, are top notch. The whole team just came together. We had a blast setting up the booth. We had a blast putting our heart, our soul, our energy into it. But what was really fun for me is I got to be there doing interviews. And with the interviews, uh, I sat down in front of this beautiful quilt. So I'm gonna try to get a couple of pieces of information in at one time on this Facebook channel, making it fun, right? New t-shirts, the whole deal, new quilt behind me, the whole deal, this is radical happening. So at any rate, um, what I'm trying to say is I sat down to do interviews in the booth at Michael Miller Fabrics and we were sitting in front of this beautiful quilt. I've kind of been keeping top secret. I'm gonna just go hide and seek for a few minutes here. Is this incredible or what? This is the um, color wheel. Uh, the uh, Cotton Couture, Michael Miller Solids. It's the color wheel and So Colorful program is what I'm really trying to say. And So Colorful, that's kind of like phase two. Phase one of So Colorful is this radical kit in the box. Yeah, you know what I said, kit in the box. And um, with the kit in the box, you're going to get this super cool panel that you can build your own color wheel for reference in your sewing room studio library, the dining room, wherever you do your sewing, of course. Um, uh, now, these are supposed to be shipping to your local quilt shops in September. We had a huge run on these. They fell in love with them. People went nuts for them. So please just simply, when you visit your local quilt shop or give them a quick phone call, remind them you want your Michael Miller So Colorful products. Uh, you're going to have a blast with it. People are going to be doing classes and workshops and Fabric's falling down on the wall over there. Well, we better get to that side camera then, quick. <laughs> I'm moving stuff around. I was going to show also off the fabric we're working with today for the super cool cape, right? Um, and this giant pile of yardage that I'm saving for next week's project, which is um, also um, from the hero line from Sandra Clements. These awesome little superheroes. They're flying about. But I'm going to do a border quilt next week. 
my goal is to make it a full functioning tutorial um, so that I can edit it down and there's a lot of steps but I, what I really want to do is make some fun kind of wonky stars out of some of the rest of the stuff from the hero line and I'm going to use that border print um, on the back uh, around the edges is what I'm trying to say I'm so excited I don't even know what to say so here let me show you real quick overhead um, what we're looking at uh, for today and also throughout this fabric line it's really cute And hopefully that'll clear up a little bit. I will confess, I've uh, downgraded, I think, my I broken iPhone on the overhead. Um, um, the problem with the iPhone overhead now is it's a really old one and the camera's not super great. But it has a power plug that holds control, so that's better. Anyways, so today's ape... Um, not an apron, it's a cape. An apron goes on the front. Today's cape, I'm using this awesome geometric uh, on one side and the super powerful lightning bolts here on the other. Um, but what I was starting to talk about when I started stumbling around with the cameras there was what I want to do is I want to use this super cool running yardage border print um, around the outside, like a like a border, you know, around the outside of this really cool um, square or center quilt and that's going to be really neat. So I'm saving up and building some ideas for next week. My goal is to do a full functioning tutorial, you know, like one of those ones that's edited and pretty and not messy and all this. So we'll see what happens. I've got a lot of sewing to do and I've got a lot of things to do with the editing of those awesome um, interviews. That interview was so much fun. We have 34 interviews and I'm saving a couple super special ones in there. I did get to sit down with my bestest quilting buddy. Uh, that's not fair. Everyone else's bestest quilting buddy. One of my best quilting buddies is uh, Scott Hansen. He's a true good friend of mine and he happens to be a quilter. So he's my best quilting buddy. But one of my truly people that I admire that is also a friend of mine is Angela Walters. And I got to sit down with her. We actually had a re-roll camera. We ran out of footage because we talked for so long. A lot about quilting and a lot about what she's doing and stuff. So I'm kind of saving that one up towards the end because it's kind of a longer video. And of course, I'm a big fan of Angela Walters as many, many, many of you are also. Um, but gosh, Heidi Pridemore sat down with me. The folks from uh, the Crabtree Arts Collective sat down with me, which was a really neat group of people to meet. Um, and a bunch of fantastic shop owners were out there. And we got a bunch of footage that I'm going to allow, they're allowing me to use to encourage you to visit the store. So this is going to be really cool. Um, I've been talking forever. I can see a clock over there. I've started to try not to be so long-winded. Let's do a quick comments check and see how it's going over here. All right. Um, uh, did I say I was going to do a quilt on the tutor uh, tutorial on the quilt behind me? Let me get out of the way of the quilt behind me because it's beautiful. Um, no, I am not doing a quilt tutorial on that. I'm going to start doing tutorials uh, again on full quilts. This quilt here, um, I had it written down. I checked it. It's on a piece of paper, but I don't want to get it wrong. It is Joanne Marsh um, did this, and it's an amazing piece. Uh, I think Custom Quilts is the label on the other side, but Joanne Marsh made this. It features a bunch of our basics, our cotton couture, and our marbles, and our hash dots. And at today's, at the end of today's video, my little thing to keep you around, of course, you don't have to be present to win because I already know who the winner is, we did at Quilt Market give away 100 half bolts. That is 600 yards if my math is good. And if my math is bad, it is 750 yards of fabric to one lucky shop owner, which means all of you get to go out there and get a bunch of basics, which is going to be incredible. So at the end of the video, I'm going to announce today's winner. What did you have to do to win 600 to 750 yards of basics fabrics from Michael Miller. Well, you had to attend Quilt Market and sit down in our booth and write an order with us. We took your orders back. We sorted them all up. Actually, I thought we should put the orders in the shredder. I thought that'd be really fun and see if we could pull a name out or something like that, making it more challenging. But we hadn't processed the orders yet. So I got most of the orders back out of the shredder. And the one that didn't get completely shredded, that will be the winner today. I'm just making fun. We uh, put them in a random process generator thing. And we are going to give out a bunch of fabric. And Michael Miller will contact you. We'll take it every step of the way. It's going to be super easy. And I just love working uh, with these group of folks that are so creative and come up with these great ideas. So 
Um, I'm also going to plug real quick because I'm introducing some new tools on today's set. Olfa, one of our fantastic sponsors also, uh, to the Michael Miller family, and I just got wrapped up in the big deal of it all. I've done some work with Olfa as well, which is really cool, but Olfa sponsors our brand ambassadors, and so somehow I got this awesome box uh, with the brand new, like if, as if I wasn't happy enough with my Ruby cutter for the 40-year Olfa anniversary. Now I have this awesome new uh, True Blue splash cutter and also my True Blue um, retractable. Now, 10 seconds longer. I am going to set this aside for when I'm not talking to all of you. I love the shape of this cutter, the splash cutter, but I always forget to close the blade, making it unsafe when I'm talking to the cameras. I'm paying attention to too many other things going on in the room. So you'll be seeing me now using my awesome retractable cutter because now I have a beautiful brand new one that I love, and that will be much safer for me here on the set. I love both handles, but there is a tool for every job, and of course this new dark gray black mat. I've been told, I'm not sure I'm correct on this, so please don't hold me accountable, but I believe this is the new ultra dense mat, which is gonna make it work even better for your Shark 14 millimeter freestyle apple cutters because they're meant for cornering and that's really, really cool. And that's part of that partnership I was hoping to work out with Ulfa and we might be onto something. Who knows, who knows, who knows? Keep following along and we will tell you more. You ready to do some sewing? I promised you tutorials and education on Wednesdays and I have been talking for like six weeks and I haven't done a darn thing except for that one really cool tutorial. Oh, and then there was that other cool tutorial and there was the quilt with the flower basket. That was cool too. Uh, I guess we've been doing a lot of cool stuff. I'm kidding. Now, I have for you today a printable I do not expect you to memorize or screen capture this. Just simply enjoy. Um, what you're looking at here right now is the free printable, and these are the dimensions I'm going to walk you through for the cape I have been wearing this entire time. Mine is larger than Mike, so we're going to make mine today, but I'll use Mike as an example in a minute. I do not know how to put this printable onto the live video. I'm a quilter, not an IT guy. So, I will be putting this printable in the link once this video is finished airing live. I will, I have the printable, I will link it there. Um, and also, if you're not aware, Michael Miller Fabrics has an inspirational page at michaelmillerfabrics.com and a lot of the free things, including the information and the pattern um, for the flower vase that I did a couple of weeks ago, that is on the free downloads section of the michaelmillerfabrics.com inspiration page. So this will probably end up there as well, but again, I am not an IT guy and the person in charge of that I believe is on vacation this week. So we have instructions. I'm going to go slow. And remember, this is a custom fit cape. It hits me right above my knees, and it's hard to see, but there is a bit of an arc to the back side, so it's not just a straight line. We're going to do some character with this. And the thing I am the most proud of in this design is the fact that it makes my muscles look so fantastic. <laughs> no, it's safe. It's tied underneath behind me here. So it's still tied on, easily taken on and off, but it is not going around my neck. And so it is super comfortable. I've had it on for over an hour already, and I'm just ready to go flying around the house. It's fantastic. So I am using the Hero line from Sandra Clemens. Um, if you are not into the black and gray, well then, of course, maybe you would enjoy our beautiful um, blue and I'm just going to call this more the primary colorway. Uh, a bunch of fan, fantastic fabrics in there as well. But I'm using the black and gray on my cape because I kind of thought, like with this black and gray, like it's kind of like a villain, you know, hero cape kind of thing too because I've got both sides to it. It may not necessarily be a superhero cape. I don't know. It's just a lot of fun. And that's why we sew. That's why we are here because it is truly just a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to take a second because I also want to capture this as much as possible in case this would be a benefit as a good finished edited tutorial. I'm going to take a second and turn on the iron, clear all this stuff out of the way. You know you're watching me live and I'm try I don't want to pretend like I'm doing something I'm not. So I'm just going to take the second to make life easier on everybody, and mostly myself, because I want to have a fantastic project for us today. That will help the 
Pro cameras now sync up. I'm going to record this version in case it is worth pulling out and making a polish tutorial. The cape goes together so fast. I think I might be able to do it live in the 30 minutes that I have on the clock starting ding, ding, ding now. Probably not true, but let's get started nonetheless. All right, Mike, you're driving me nuts up here. As super as you're doing, let's cut you down. We're going to need you anyways. So down come the supports. Mike is free. We're making a cape. It's awesome. Here, buddy, you just hang out there for a second. We're going to need you. So what I did, as I said, is I took a yard and a quarter because my cape is 45 inches long top to bottom. So I have at least a yard and a quarter of two different fabrics. Okay, so I have my inside and my outside or my inside and my outside, however you want to see it. The cape will be totally reversible the way we're making it today. Now, I'm saving these two fabrics for the quilt I was describing in the beginning of the video. So I'm going to make two other colors so that I have, or, or a different looking cape, and I'm actually using black thread today so you can really see the sewing and everything. I'm trying to be a really good teacher for us. So the first thing we're going to want to do, and of course you would measure, if you're doing this for a shorter person than myself, I'm almost six foot on a good day with the curls, um, then of course you might want to make it a little bit shorter, but we're going to use the full body of the fabric, and I'm basically going to just work of it off of the fold. So you can come home directly from your local quilt shop. You can keep it right on the fold. Now, it's debatable whether you want to consider this a washable project or not. Of course, it will be washable, but I don't know that you're going to need to pre-wash it, is what I'm trying to say. I have my other fabric, my liner fabric, whatever you want to call this fabric here. And I'm going to take it also, and I'm going to set it on the fold. The fold is going to help me get all my math correct. And we're going to actually do some pen marks and whatnot. Just checking comments. Wow, we have friends from Italy watching and stuff. That is great. Okay, well, you enjoy your conversations together out there about Italy and Sicily while I tidy this up for a second. I'm cool with that. Okay, now I said we're doing a 45 top to bottom. I did not completely prep this out yet. All of these measurements are going to be rough, close, however you want to see it. Now, let's drop back into the overhead real quick, our dimensions. I'm going to zoom you in. Now, what we need to do for our top is I want about 18 inches worth. So therefore, I can just simply come over nine inches from my fold line. So I'm just going to spin this so I've got my nine inches or my zero inches. And I'm going to come over nine inches and I'm marking right here. And that's going to be basically the edge of the top of the shoulder where it's going to start to go downhill. So that also means that at this point, I guess I should have trimmed this off while I was here. I'm using the fold over here to square this up. I'm going to do a terrible cut right now with my hand because I already have everything squared up. So if you're watching this and you're a brand new quilter, do note that I have been quilting and sewing and all of this stuff for a million years. And no, I am not setting you up for a Julia Child's Saturday Night Live moment right now. I'm not going to pretend cut my arm off. If I start bleeding here, call the doctor, please. I am not. This is just a terrible cut, but I realize I should have really cleaned this up first. So I'm going under my hand. Now the trick to that is I was pushing the pressure of the blade up against the ruler here. I had plenty of clearance and still don't ever do that again. Golly, Rob, you terrible teacher. Okay, but I still have my mark and that's cool. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go down 44 inches, which for me, I know is basically the length of this project. So now real quick, let's take a second. And I've got it rotated, so I'm being a good teacher and a good cutter. I'm going to square the bottom piece off with my fold. Okay, and now that was important to do that first because our next step is what I want to do with this is get a pen. You can see I'm thinking through some of this as we go because last time I used a marker but I was marking on the insides. So let's just 
overhead. Here we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up five inches. And you can't quite see that, but close enough. Coming up five inches enough, and I'm going to put a mark here. Then I can come all the way out to that outer edge. Maybe easier for you to see it here. Okay, so now I've got my pin here. I'm coming, that's five inches up from my bottom corner. I'm coming all the way over here. Now I'm gonna mark this edge up here. Okay, and at that point, what that is, is it's gonna be our V. So we're gonna draw a line here and then we're gonna go we're going to go round it across the bottom. For Mike's cape, I just did a straight piece. Okay, so now what I want to do is I know that this is my bottom mark, like yay. I can basically take this because I want it to be longer at the center, shorter at the corners, and I'm going to start. And after I start to cut this, I'm just hanging on, and I've got a really nice sharp blade and I'm cutting all my layers at once, and I've just made myself a nice little, well, fairly smooth arc. I'm gonna sew through that line in a second, so if it's jagged at all, I'm not concerned, okay? Now, the next step we're gonna do, though, is we're gonna go ahead, let me see, which is my, I don't even know which camera is active right now. Okay, good, we're over there. Little side angle for you, see if that helps a little bit. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to that first line we marked, And the other line we have marked here, and now I'm going to do the old double ruler trick. Now, I won't be using this to cut, but I will be using it to keep everything squared. So, of course, my ironing board's in the way, but I made most of my studio pretty portable functional in case that happened. So, we just slide that. And again, none of this is rocket surgery, kids. We're just playing here. Okay, so the lines could be good. I realize I left my line in my selvage, so now I'm cheating it slightly. But what I will point out, when you're free playing or you're just cutting and just sewing like this, just having fun, I'm doing both layers together. So everything's the same. It doesn't matter if the measurements get off from the things I'm saying because I'm just playing here. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to begin my first cut. I'm heading from the bottom corner up to the top of the neck. So as I start to come through here, what I will not do is I will not cut through both rulers at the same time. It's a great way to nibble into the second ruler and cause a major problem or whatnot. But now what we can do is we can pull these up, we can slide, and now I can use half of my ruler on the line that was already cut to continue the cut. So this becomes like the three-point turn of sewing. You're doing lots of little steps to keep everything nice and accurate, but when it's done, you will be very pleased that you still have a straight line, an easy to sew line, an easy to cut line. Presto. Now, technically, we should have two pieces of fabric ready to go with this fun cape shape. Nice and neat, but we still need the ties or the straps. So I made a couple of them already for you, but I want to show you how I did it. Now, I made these at one and a half inches wide by 30 inches long, and I literally took them. Look, I haven't, this is no editing. This is live. I haven't touched this fabric. This fabric right here, you could either use one of each. You can line them both, but you're going to need two strips, at least 30 inches. If you could go longer, great that are going to be one and a half inches wide. So I'm going to just set my beautiful cotton couture aside for later. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of fold this. And again, as I teach live, it's different than teaching 
on the edited videos because I have to think about what I'm really saying and teaching you correctly. I'm folding it this way because now hopefully you can see too that selvage isn't completely usable on both sides. So I folded it. I folded it across here. I'm going to cut off the bad part of the selvage while trimming it up. I shouldn't say bad. There's nothing bad about a selvage. It just doesn't look good as my strap. So I've got a little dog bed bin under there. Now we said we needed one and a half inch strips. So now I'm just going to slide my ruler over here to the one and a half inch mark. Like this. You'll need two. So let's just cut them both together and see how that long that second shorter one is because of the way I folded this. I'm cutting straight a grain, but there was a bit of a bias from the way we made that little edge. So now there's 24. Whew, I made it. I have 31 inches, but you really only need 30 at the most. Okay. And of course, because I was cutting it folded, I actually have four strips, so I've made way more than I would ever need. But I still think I gave you some bad information. <laughs> I gave you terrible information. Stop, hold the phone, and um, it's two and a half inch wide strips. That's what the paper says, not one and a half inch wide strips. So two and a half, let me cut another one. Um, here, you have those over there. And uh, <laughs> that was how wide it was when it was finished. Goofy Rob, no problem. Because, like I said, I've got them prepped out. Good. I can see that I'm picking up viewers. The, the longer this takes me and the worse I do, the more viewers are watching. This is great news, folks. This is fantastic. <laughs> okay. And no, I am definitely right-handed, but I'm just set up left-handed in here today. Two and one half inches by 30 plus inches or 30 inches for an adult. Now we've got these little strips. We're just going to square these out because I want to show you a super cool tube turning technique that I developed a while ago, or I don't know if I developed it or not, but it, it works and it's rad and you've seen me do it before, but you haven't seen me do it here at making it fun because this is all new for all of us together, which is great. So what we're doing is we have any old spool of thicker thread, maybe poly even if you had, pretty heavy duty. This is not going to break in my hands. And I have a little safety pin because we're doing a little tube. You could use the bigger safety pin. You want a solid safety pin. As a matter of fact, gentlemen and ladies, your life at this moment depends on this safety pin. So do use a good safety pin. This is not the time to use the old safety pin in my opinion. But what we're going to do, let's see if we can do this real quick overhead so you can see it nice. I'm going to take that safety pin and I'm going to put it in the fold into the right side. And then as I lay my right sides together here and begin coming over to the sewing machine, who's got the sewing cam? I do. I do. That's right. So we're at the sewing cam and you can probably see there's that safety pin now. And then all I have to do is I drop this down and yes, I'm sewing with black thread so you can see today. I'm going to definitely backstitch to lock that in. Now I'm making sure that the thread, that chunk, that cording is over on the fold side. It's not in my seam. And now we just hit the gas. And I'm constantly taking a moment to manipulate with my fingers. I do not want to get any stitching in my cord. You know what I'm going to do with that cord is I'm going to use it as a pull tab. to bring my tube insides or right sides back out. And look at this, I am sewing and reading comments, which is not what we're supposed to be doing, but hello from Cape Cod, I see you're watching. <laughs> I love it. Such a fun trip I had out though. Oops, I was reading comments, I just sewed off the line. Hopefully you saw that, that was so funny. Goofy, Rob. Okay, let me show you how this finishes up. Let me get focused. Get focused. It's okay. Radical. Okay, coming into the close-up cam. Now, the 
ball or yarn or cord or thread, extension cord, whatever you've used is still connected. And now I have this up here in the safety pin. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that safety pin and we're going to start to push it in and fold over the edge of the tube so that we're getting a good start. Okay, I just kind of kind of tucked it in and you know you could also if you wanted you could just do the whole thing this way like when you're fixing your sweatshirts you know or your sweatpants but what I have is I have this cord in here so now as I pull this cord I can start to gather and this is why that safety pins union is so important up in there and now what I'm doing is I'm grabbing where the safety pin was and I'm just kind of slowly but way faster than any other tube turning technique I've ever seen. Pulling that thing, presto, whammo, right sides out, all back, killer, perfect, loving it. Take the safety pin off because you have two straps to do, two and one half inches by 30 at least, right? You're going to take that there and then let's go ahead and take a moment and finish the edges that we're going to use on the strap. Now, if you were not sure how long to make your straps, of course you could make them longer than 30. Try it on the individual, your super friend, and then you could always cut this end down. In order to finish this, all I'm going to do is tuck one side. The other side is going to get caught in the cape, but this I'm just tucking the edges underneath. I would normally take the time to press it. Let's see if I've done that. Well, let's use the ones we've at least pressed. This one I've pressed in half and the seam is now on the inside or the back side, the hidden side for me. And I should have two of these dang things. So where'd the other one go? So it's gonna get in trouble if I lose the other one now. Oh no. I swore I made two. Oh well, well we'll finish this one out. <laughs> Live videos. We're not going to need those anymore. And I know it's just down here in the pile, but you need to figure out how to finish it. We might as well just finish it together. So before you roll that edge under, do take a moment and press it because that'll help you know where to put that edge, that seam. So just an easy little pressing on that there. Of course, is that going to be long enough? Okay, I'm not going to blow this one. Give me two seconds. I'm going to go wandering around the room. Oh, I think I see it. I threw it across the room earlier. I don't even have to go that far. See, here it is. Super! <laughs> Yes, I knocked the needle cam, but that's okay. It'll get over it way better. Okay, because it is longer and that will be important. So what I was mentioning eight hours ago when I got deer in the headlights over that situation was at this point, we have pressed these over. We have right sides together. Now you can use a stiletto, a scissor. I find is often really easy to come in here and poke the edges in because we're going to finish this with a really nice, attractive edge, even though it really won't be seen because it's tied up and underneath my back over here. But what we need to do, and again, you can do this now, or this could be your very, very last step if you're not sure on how long you want your straps to be. I used 30 inches because that's what I had it fit me, and it's what I was able to get left over from my yardage. But if you had a larger person, you may need to splice those together, no problem. Um, let's show you what I'm doing here at the needle, though. Okay, so there I am at the needle. I have that edge folded underneath. I'm going to do a little top stitching. I'm going to recommend thread that matches for you. I'm using black so you can see the work today. And I've just kind of, kind of gone right over the top of there. Super easy, super sealed. And I'm going to leave the other one for later because I really want to get back into the construction of our cape. So now we're going to go right sides together. So I'm going to take and I'm going to find that narrow edge, the neck edge. And I'm going to throw this out there. I'm 
and take a second here and clear off some of my other work too because I might find that ironing this together will help me anchor the layers. It's a really cool trick if you don't know that. Pressing the pieces together will sometimes really help nicely. Now, we're doing this right sides together. If I forget to say it, we're going to need to leave an opening somewhere. I prefer way down in the bottom. It's way easier. But we're going to need to leave some way to get ourselves out of this um, project. So what I would like to do is I'm going to take with my right sides together and a quarter inch seam allowance at least, if you'd like to use three eighths, uh, better polyester or cotton thread because it's just a costume. If you were going to really use the cape for one of those bat suits or flying, of course, I'm putting my disclaimer up right now. I am completely full of stuff and I'm not going to ever jump off of a mountain with this real cape here. But you know what I'm saying? Polyester is a stronger th thread, so that's what you would use. Now to make this seam, um, oh, we're still at the needle camera. I've been talking the whole time to a blank uh, screen. Good. And we're going to backstitch and thread cutter coming. I apologize. I know I realized I was talking with the needle camera on the whole time last time. So what I was saying is I had actually laid these bad boys out right sides together on the table. I don't think you saw any of that. Um, I was mentioning that I could come back and iron them. Uh, but so far we've done this neck seam only. And now what I want to do is I want to go from the neck down to the corner because that's where I've started sewing at the neck. I'm going to finish sewing down to the corner. I'm going to do, do each side individually. So now as I come on over here to the needle cam, uh, I'm just going to show you that I am starting up at the top here where I've just come from. So let's lock that in. And I almost got super carried away because I'm thinking more about these silly technology over here. This is where we're supposed to put the straps, folks. I wanted to go and put the straps down about half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. I've gone too far. So I'm going to stop. Wasn't terribly too far. Super easy, technically. But I want to just go ahead and pop these out, those threads. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our straps. Let's think about this. There is a seam in our strap, and I consider that the wrong side. Sorry, seam, you just don't look as nice as the other side. Please place your right sides with what you want to be your outer side or your back side of the cape. I've taken the time to figure this out. So I'm going to take this print, and I'm going to lay it right sides together with that print. And I'm going to literally just put all of the body of that down inside the body of the cape. It's inside the cape, not outside the cape right now. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to visually set this about three quarters of an inch down from the bottom. I do want to have enough space that when I turn that corner later, it's not a problem. Now, let's go back over. Oh, darn it. I was on the needle cam again. It's not switching over. Sorry, kids. Got a little stressed out. Let's slow down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you here again. I put this strap at three quarters to a half of an inch down from that seam. I'll show you on the other side, I promise to do better. Let's get this stitched in. Back stitching at the top. And as I went over that strap, I'm actually back stitching through it twice to really secure it because that's what's gonna hold the body of the cape on. Now I'm gonna just let this roar. You'll get seasick that way, so I'm gonna kick it back to big cam. <laughs> and now let's just finish the side out quick. It's a little bit of a longer run of sewing, so if you like to pin or wonder clip any of this, no problem at all. I should have taken the time to pin a couple of inches every maybe 10 inches or so just to keep it secure. When I made the first one, I had no problem at all, so hopefully this will be going pretty smooth. As I'm approaching the bottom corner, I can make any kind of adjustments I need. Got a little bit of give in the fabric still at about 12, 14 inches out. Okay, now 
Now I've come to that corner and I'm going to stop right there because we're going to go back and address the other side. Okay, now I know you're on the main camera. Again, you can see what we're doing. So let's take this and talk about this all over again. What I was saying is there is a seam in this strap. This seam I considered the wrong side. This strap is the one I've already finished nicely. So I'm going to take, this is the right side and I'm going to set it against my print, which I also consider the right side. I'm coming down about three quarters of an inch as I take all of the body of the strap. So I'm letting that raw edge of the strap hang out of here as I then go ahead and secure it. If you want it to hang over just, you know, another eighth or so of fabric, that's perfectly fine because you're going to be able to see it better. You're going to be able to control it better and know right where everything's at as you come back over to get ready to stitch it. So here I am at the needle, back stitching up there to secure it. Again, as I come through the strap, I'm going all the way through the strap once, kicking it into reverse, and just man, just destroying that, but it secured it. I was going to say manhandling, but that actually would have been too nice of a turn for what I just did there. Now also, this strap, the strap that's floating around over here, make sure it's tucked inside both legs of that strap. A lot of times I'll take them and pin them in place, but today, obviously, I was just hustling and trying to get that done and here in the headlights. Anyways, so here we are with that. I'm just lining up both edges, flying through here. Because we're almost done, actually. We just have to do that bottom seam. Making sure my bottom corners are still lined up nice. Okay. Now, remember, we need to leave an opening so we can get our hands back inside. So I'm going to simply rotate here. I'm going to set a few stitches. This is that bottom edge. And I'm just going to kind of naturally sew all the way over to that crease, the fold that was down the center, because remember, we're going straight off the bolt, straight out of the manufacturing for this one. Now, as I approach this crease down here, I'm going to stop, I'm going to backstitch, and I'm going to cut. And the reason I'm using the crease at the bottom is that should set a nice little distance at the bottom that is somewhat square or straight so that when I turn this right sides out, it will be easier to press and top stitch as I go. Now, I did not make my time frame, so I'm walking off the set. I'm going to hit pause and re-record on the good cams because I found out uh, due to a licensing agreement DSLRs only shoot 29 minutes and 59 seconds of footage, and therefore, <laughs> that was 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, now I've jumped a gap of about four fingers. That's all I need to do to be able to get my hand inside of there. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off this edge as I go. Nice and quick, down and dirty. Try not to pull or stretch too much because you were all kind of on the bias as you came around this corner. And my edges have lined up beautifully, which is what we were hoping for. Before we get too carried away, you may want to take a moment and dog ear or snip away some of the bulk in the corners up here. And your bottom corners if you're a bit fussy about that kind of stuff. I am personally not. I'm lucky to get myself completely dressed in the middle of the in the middle of the day because that's usually when I'm in between surfing and studio time. Okay, so now I'm going to reach in here. Technically, you could grab both of those straps that are floating around up in there. Give it a tug and bring it on out. 
right sides together. Right sides out, wrong sides together now. And we are almost done. This is fantastic. Oh, thanks, Loretta. I got a thumbs up. Of course, I'm not sure if you're talking to me or not. I'm not sure who all you're talking to. There's Cheryl's out there. Beth is out there. Yes, change the camera. Yes, Beth. Unfortunately, you all have about a 30 second delay from what I actually do till the time I see it back over here. So by the time I caught it, yes, I had talked for 30 seconds about what you couldn't see. <laughs> Which is so wonderful because I'm so glad you all know that I, Rob Appel, am truly a human. Uh, a lot of folks out there in this world of professionalism are more of that, professionals. But I'm more of a human. Now, what I'm doing at the moment, I forgot to tell you, is I'm actually kind of setting the seam from the inside with my hand and a little bit of muscle for my top stitching. Because the top stitching, I prefer to go all the way around with, and that's how you'll close that bottom edge as well. But because it's such an attractive looking cape, I would probably be wise to take a moment and change to a beautiful gold thread and top stitch this with gold. So what I did is I went through and I addressed the edges. I don't usually press at this point because I find that pressing actually secures it more. So see, let me see if I can just teach you this trick here. What I like to do is I like to come over here to the iron. And I take it and I just press the seam continue that was from the patchwork I was doing or the seam I was doing. And then I fold it over on the top and kind of the same thing, the way that seam was continuing along. And I just get it rolled under nice and lined up. And then, like I said, I want to take some time. I want to put the gold thread in there. Oh, and we have to announce the winner and I can see I'm running out of batteries and stuff. So I bought it pretty quick. But then at that point, we can just come through and we can just top stitch this all the way around. You have your beautiful cape. You could, of course, have done embellishments on one side if you wanted to. I want to show you how it works, and that's what Mike was set up for. Of course, I got a suspension device that's tied around him here, too. So, like I said, this is going to now actually tie in the back underneath your shoulder blades. So I used a twisty because it was easier for Mike right here. But what you do is you have your strap and your cape, right? Just like I would here, strap and my cape. Then I'm just gonna come around. I don't know if I can double cape or not, but I take my straps. Oh, oh, I can double cape. Oh, I can double cape. So I go over like this, and it's kind of neat because then it hits you on your shoulders just right. And then you bring it underneath your back this way. Then you tie it on here. and you tie it on there. And it holds, it works, it doesn't choke you, it's fantastic. Now, if I was dealing with a three-year-old or a four-year-old or something, I would probably figure out where to adjust and I would set one of those nice little Fastex style plastic buckles so that that youngster could just buckle it right in. Uh, I don't know that you could slide into it and you know, it might be difficult that way if it was already a continual loop. Of course, you can tie it on them. Once you tie it on them, they're not gonna wanna take it off all day long anyways. So that's not a problem really getting it off, just getting it back on. But yeah, it's basically designed to not choke you. It comes around, goes under your arms in the front like yay, under the arms, and then around to the back. So cool, excellent, but who? 220, we are running shy on time here. We've been going forever. I see we have a lot of folks out here. Let's check some comments really quick. Well, thank you, Yvonne. I love you too, that's very sweet. Um, it is a very cool thing. I love my apron. It's working good. Um, human is good. Uh, Cheryl, I appreciate you especially. Gosh, when did I meet you? Five years ago somewhere, Sacramento, I think it was. Um, and you've just always been so supportive. I appreciate that. And I remember these names, especially now that I'm handling all my own feedback, all my own comments. It's really neat because I'm starting to recognize a lot of you even more. So we have a big deal. This is it. Are you ready? Time to announce the winner of our, I've got all the fun stuff. Are you ready for the fun stuff? Here it is, bingo, bingo, at Quilt Market. If you came to the booth and you wrote an order with us, looking at all the fantastic fabrics we had, we had a giveaway. We put everybody's names, and there were certainly a lot of them, into a drawing for 100 half bolts 
of basic fabrics. And, I mean, does it get any better than that? Maybe we should keep the intensity going a little bit longer. What is a basic, you say, Rob? Well, a basic is something incredible like our dumb dots or uh, that's dots or whatever. So this is a collection of beautiful basics, one of my favorite basics from Michael Miller. Jerry, you're going to fall down if I move this, but... Oh, Jerry! This, oh, it's incredible. I don't know if I hold it still enough, but it's the hash dot, so it's a hash texture with then um, the dots on top. It's incredible fabric, just great, great stuff. So these are considered basic fabrics. Somebody just got 100 bolts. Oh, this is gonna be incredible. So back to the drawing, this is what we're doing here. Oh, the suspense is going up, the numbers are going back up, the subscribers are logging in to find out if they're the lucky shop owner that won the 100 half bolts of fabric. Here we go. With no further delay, we have the winner. Now, this is exciting. I hope you're all excited as I am for this. Our winner. Quilters Hideaway in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. That is right. The Quilters Hideaway in Bartlesville, Oklahoma is the winner of the 100 half bolts of fabric. Super fun, and now I'm sideways in that little screen, which is kind of cool. So let me keep playing with technology real quick and say, there we go, there we go. Congratulations, Quilters Hideaway. You are the lucky owner of a lot of <laughs> yardage. Oh my gosh. Michael Miller will call you. We have your phone number, your contact info. We'll set it all up. And uh, rumor has it that they had just bought big into the basics program, which is super fun. So we're going to be able to take care of, I don't know if they're reorders. We're going to expand their program. We're going to let them um, enjoy it. And I'm going to keep making fantastic projects. I'm hoping next week uh, to have a recorded tutorial for you on a wonky star that was up on the wall over here before the landslide happened if you missed that if you're new to tuning in but yeah wonky star quilt using some more of this fantastic hero fabric from sandra clemens it is shipped out to the stores it is shipped uh, mid-april so you should be able to get it in all your local quilt shops uh, in both the blue or the black and gray colorways that i've been playing with it's a super cute line i love it and it's super fun and i love all of you thank you for being here on a wednesday with me rob appel from michael Miller Fabrics, making it fun on YouTube and everywhere else I can go with a t-shirt like this. I mean, how could you not, right? So we will see you next week, whether it's recorded or it's live. That will depend on how much of the project I get done before late Tuesday night. I love you all. We'll see you real soon. Peace out.